Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of Phoenix Ray Ace Attorney. In the last episode, we uh, started the investigation of Turnabout Sisters and we also finished the investigation of Turnabout Sisters. And so today we're going to be going into the trial. So let's get started. Uh, let me adjust my volume here. Right there. September 7th, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number one. Oh, okay, we're going straight into it. Cool. The court is now in session for the trial of Miss Moya Fay. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Miles Edgeworth. I better not show any signs of weakness today, or he'll be on me in an instant. Mr. Edgeworth, please give the court your opening statement. Thank you, Your Honor. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, was at the scene of the crime. The prosecution has evidence she committed this murder, and we have a witness who saw her do it. The prosecution sees no reason to doubt the facts of this case, Your Honor. I see. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Let's begin, then. You may call your- I believe that's for the judge, but okay. The prosecution calls the chief officer at the scene, Detective Gumshoe. Witness, please state your name and profession to the court. Sir! My name's Dick Gumshoe, sir. I'm the detective in charge of homicides down at the precinct, sir. Detective Gumshoe, please describe for us the details of this murder. Very well, sir. Let me use this format by the office to explain. The body was found by this window here. And the cause of death? Loss of blood due to being struck by a blunt object, sir. The murder weapon was a statue of the Thinker, found next to the body, sir. It was heavy enough to hit the... <laughs> sorry. It was heavy enough to be a deadly weapon, even in a girl's hand, sir. The court accepts the statue as evidence. They're still calling it a statue. Now, detective. Y yes sir You immediately arrested Ms. Maya Fay, who was found at the scene, correct? Can you tell me why? Yes, sir. I had hard evidence she did it, sir. Mm hmm. Detective Gumshoe, please testify to the court about this hard evidence. All right. As soon as the phone call came in, I rushed to the scene. There were two people there already. The defendant, Ms. Maya Fay, and the lawyer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I immediately arrested Ms. Maya Fay. Why? We had a witness account describing her. The witness saw Ms. Maya Fay at the very moment of the murder. Hmm, the very moment, you say? Very well, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Cross-examine what? I couldn't see a single contradiction in that testimony. Whoosh? Smack? <laughs> hey, my just threw something at me. What's this? When my sister couldn't find any contradictions in a witness's testimony, she would bluff it and press the witness on every detail. The witness always slips up and says something wrong. It worked lots of times. <laughs> I should have expected Maya would know some of her sister's tricks. Alright, let's give this a try. Something the matter? No, Your Honor. I'd like to begin my cross-examination. Uh, so I guess we're just gonna press everything. Who did you say you got a call from? Hey, pal, don't play dumb, you know who. The call was from a customer at the Gatewater Hotel right across from the crime scene. Hmm, okay, I pressed. Not sure it did much, though. Right, please continue. Detective Gumshoe, how long would you say it took between you receiving the call and your arrival at the scene of the crime? Hmm, right, I'd say it was about three minutes. Th that's pretty fast. I'm out of this month as quick response. That's how I got there before the killer got away. Indeed. So, tell us who the people, the two people you found on the scene were. Yes, sir. Are you absolutely sure it was us? Listen, pal, your dumb act will only get you so far. With the funky hippie clothes and your spiky hair, you two stand out like, like suspicious people at a crime scene. Well, he does have a point about her. She is pretty unmistakable. I should pick my points to press with a little more care. <laughs> Why's that? What's your reason? Oh, 
Hold on just one second. Yeah? If I heard correctly, you said you arrested her because you had hard evidence she did it, correct? Huh? Did, did I say that? Me? I heard you say it. You did say it. You said it. Exactly what about the suspicious woman in Pink's claim was a hard evidence? But what Ms. May isn't suspicious and she sure isn't pink, pal. She is pink. Well, I guess she is pink. That's enough, Detective Gumshoe. Do you have any more solid proof other than her claims, Detective? Um... Hmm, I guess pressing can have its advantages. Yes! Ugh. Sorry, I got the order of things mixed up in my testimony, Your Honor, sir. It was something I should have told you about first, Your Honor. Very well, Detective. Let's hear your testimony again. Why do they just allow that? What the heck? <coughs> After securing... <laughs> After securing the suspect, I examined the scene of the crime with my own eyes. I found a memo written on a piece of paper next to the victim's body. On it, the word Maya was written clearly in blood. A lab test result shows that the blood was the victim's. Also, there was blood found on the victim's finger. Before she died, the victim wrote the killer's name. <laughs> how you like that? That's my hard evidence. Ha, how you like that? Hmm. Before we begin cross-examination, I have a question for you, Detective. Y Your Honor? Why didn't you testify about that vital piece of evidence the first time? Uh, uh, I know. I'm real embarrassed I forgot about it, Your Honor, sir. Try to be more careful. Very well. The defense may begin its cross-examination. After securing the suspect, I examined the scene of the crime with my own eyes. I found a memo written on a piece of paper next to the victim's body. On it, the word Maya was written clearly in blood. The lab test results showed that the blood was the victim's. Also, there was blood found on the victim's finger. Before the she died, the victim wrote the killer's name. No! Um... I remember this. I remember this one. Death was instantaneous. Let's go. Detective Gumshoe. There is one thing I want you to clarify for me here. You say that the victim, Mia Fey, wrote this note. That she was accusing the defendant, Maya Fey? That's really what you're saying? W what This isn't one of those lawyer tricks now, is it? Of course she wrote it. Who else could've? You have it backwards, detective. But backwards The victim is the only person who absolutely could not have written it. This is a report from your department, detective. Immediate death due to a blow from a blunt object. She died immediately. But... No butting your way out of this one, detective. Order, order! The defense has a point. Someone who died immediately wouldn't have the time to write anything down. Mr. Wright, I beg your pardon, but when exactly did you obtain that autopsy report? W when? Um... Yeah, the day after. It was the day after the murder. The prosecution's point being... That autopsy report is outdated, your honor. Ah! <laughs> this stupid meme. W what? A second autopsy was performed yesterday, at my request. Death was almost immediate due to a blow from a blunt object, but there is a possibility that the victim lives for several minutes after the blow. I received these results this morning. N no way! Your Honor, it's quite easy to imagine that the victim did have time to write Maya. That is all. I see! Damn you, Edgeworth. I should have known you'd have something up your sleeve. Oh, come on. Why, Mr. Wright, you look shocked. Something you want to say? You're a sham. <gasps> Mr. Edgeworth, I've heard there's nothing you won't do to get your verdict. What reason could you possibly have had to request a second autopsy report? Mr. Wright, the defense will require from personal attacks on the prosecution. No matter, Your Honor. Mr. Wright. Say what you will, the, e the evidence in this report is undeniable. Your Honor, I submit this report to the court. Oh, understood. The court accepts the evidence. Autopsy report updated in the court record. Well, Your Honor, the evidence strongly suggests the victim was identifying the killer. Oh, I suppose that's the obvious conclusion, yes. 
Darn, this isn't good. The prosecution would like to call its next witness. This poor, innocent girl saw the murder with her own eyes. This girl is anything but innocent. Let the witness, Miss April Mays, take the stand. Exactly what part of her is innocent? Exactly! See, see we, we're on the same wavelength right here. Witness, your name, please. April May, at your service. <laughs> Order! An introduction should not require any reaction from the crowd. The witness will refrain from wanton winking. <laughs> Aw, yes, your honor. This is not good. She's already captured the heart of every man in the court. Tell us, where were you on the night of September 5th when the murder occurred? Um, gee, I was, like, in my hotel room. <laughs> I checked in right after lunch. And this hotel is directly across from the Fancola offices? Mmm, that's right, big bo- <laughs> Please testify to the court about what you saw. <laughs> oh, God. I hate her. I hate her. It was, like, nine o'clock at night. I looked at the window, you know. And then, ooh, I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. The one attacking her was the mousy girl singing in the vengeance chair. Then the woman, like, dodged to one side and ran away. But that girl, she caught up to her and, and she hit her. Then the woman with the long hair, she kind of slumped. The end. That's all I saw. Every little bitsy witsy. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have a lot of weird sinus problems today. Mmm. Well, Your Honor? I see. It's a remarkably solid testimony. I didn't see a need to trouble the witness any... W w wait Your Honor? Yes, Mr. Wright? What about my cross-examination? Oh, I thought the witness's testimony just now was quite firm, didn't you? Mr. Wright, I understand you are Mia Fey's understudy, were you not? You must know her techniques well. Her cowardly way of finding tiny false and perfectly good testimonies. Yeah. Hey, how dare you! Well, Mr. Wright, will you cross-examine the witness? Of course. I'll gladly proceed with the cross-examination. If only because I have a feeling Andrew doesn't want me to. She has to have some weakness. Very well, you may begin your cross-examination. It was like 9 o'clock at night, I looked out the window, you know, and then, ooh, I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. The one attacking her was a mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. Let's press that. How do you know she was the defendant? Huh? Well, you know, sh she had a girlish physique. Women know these things. Look, I, I just know, okay? There was only one person at the scene of the crime with a short, girlish figure. And the testimony is bulletproof, Your Honor. He's right. <laughs> I question the testimony. Hold on a minute, that testimony stinks! <laughs> what? what? Miss May, I'm willing to bet that. Oh, wait, hold on. Uh, I guess you're lying? Are you telling the truth? Did you really see the defendant? <laughs> Ooh. <clears throat> Mr. Wright, what's the meaning of this? Yes, what is the meaning? Somebody tell me because I'm clueless about this, I mean. Okay. If you had really witnessed my client, Maya Faye, you would have noticed her clothes before noticing her physique. <laughs> no one wears clothes like this on a daily basis, except her. And I'm no expert on fashion, but her hairdo looks far from normal to me. It's a literal top knot. <laughs> However, the witness's testimony mentions neither of these things. The testimony is bogus. But, but... Still, we don't know if she was dressed like that the way... The, uh, <laughs> dressed that way the night of the murder. She was, Your Honor. I saw her. And so did Detective Gumshoe. What do you say to that, Miss May? R R R what are you trying to say, you mean lawyer? I saw what I saw. I just didn't think all the trifling little details were necessary, darling. Miss May... The court would like to remind you to please omit nothing in your testimony. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I'll be a good girl, I promise. <laughs> your testimony again, if you would. Damn, I almost had her. I did 
see everything I did! The victim, the woman, dodged the first attack and ran off to the right. Then the girl in the hippie clothes ran after her. And she hit her with that weapon! I saw it! I did! That, that clock, um, the kind of statue clock, the thinker, I think. Well, does the accuracy of my report not startle you? <laughs> I see. What did you just call that? I only wish you had been so detailed from the beginning. Please begin the cross-examination. They'd been calling the thinker a statue the whole time, and yet she knows that it's a clock. Hold on. Let's go. And the girl in the hippie clothes ran after her, and she hit her with that weapon. I saw it. I did. That that clock. Um, that kind of statue clock. The thinker, I think. Haha. -ha. How did you know? That it was a clock. Ms. May, what you said just now was quite revealing. Revealing? Ooh, you'd like that, wouldn't you? Ugh. You just said- <laughs> I'm sorry, my voices are- I'm sorry, I'm very tired today. Anyways, you just said that the statue of the thinker was a clock. But there's no way of knowing that just by looking at it. Another person in much the same position as you recently called this a clock, too, and he was found guilty of murder. Do you want to be found guilty of murder, Miss May? Order, order! Miss May, can you explain how you know this was a clock? Ooh, um... The witness saw the murder with her own eyes. That's all that's important here. The defense is trying to confuse the issue with trivial concerns. Yes, yes, of course. You will withdraw your question, Mr. Wright. No, I won't. But questions are all I have, Your Honor. And as you may recall, I've caught murderers with these questions before. Well, only once. Objection sustained. You may continue to question the witness. Heck yeah. Phew, that was close. If you stopped me there, the trial would be over. Huh? What? So, what happens now? What happens now is you answer my question. How did you know it was a clock? What? Th th that's... Because I heard it? Yeah, I heard it say the time. So, you've been to the law offices of Faye and Co. N no, hey, I didn't say that. Why would I go there? I heard it from my hotel room. <laughs> the law offices of Faye and Co, where the murder took place, are very close to the hotel. She could easily have heard the clock. Hmm, well, Mr. Wright, are you satisfied? No, of course not, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. I can't give up now. I'm not satisfied because... Oh, it couldn't have rung, right? Your Honor, members of the court. It is inconceivable that the clock in question rang. It's... it's empty. That clock is missing its clockwork. How could you possibly... Just have a look, as soon as you can. Oh! See anything interesting, Your Honor? It is as the defense says. This clock is missing its clockwork. It's quite empty. Mr. Wright, would you care to explain to the court the meaning of this? It is as you can see. The clock was empty. It couldn't have rung. Therefore, this witness is a big fat liar. F fat Well, Miss May? Oh, come on. Tisk tisk. Quite a show you've put on for us, Mr. Wright. He knew the clock was empty. Somehow, he knew. I'm afraid you've forgotten one thing, however. Indeed, the clock is empty, as you say, it can't ring. However, we must ask, when was the clockwork removed? If it was after the witness heard the clock, then there is no contradiction. Mm, that's true. That is a possibility. The clock might have been emptied after she heard it. And that is exactly what happened, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Wright, well, does he have any proof of that? Can you prove when the clockwork was removed? Oh, <laughs> impossible, of course. I have proof. W what? Wasn't it you who told me proof is everything? Well, I was listening. And now I'll show you the proof you like so much. The evidence that proves when the clockwork was removed is... This. 
take a look at this. Hmm, that's a very cute cell phone. Ooh, you have a girly phone. W wait, wait, this isn't my phone. Listen, this is the defendant's cell phone, and it contains a recording. A recording of a conversation she had with the victim on the day of the murder. Oda, Oda! The defendant's cell phone? Th this wasn't brought to my attention because Gumshoe gave it to me before he gave it to you. Perhaps it said to Gumshoe overlooked it? Mm, the good detective better remember he's up for evaluation soon. My heart goes out to you, Edgeworth. Not. Let's hear the conversation. So you just want me to hold on to the thinker for you then? If you could. Ah, uh, I should probably tell you, the clock wasn't talking right now. Huh? It's not working? That's lame! I had to take the clockwork out. Sorry. Your Honor? I think this recording makes it clear that the clockwork was already gone. And this was recorded in the morning, before the witness even arrived at her hotel. <laughs> well, Miss May, would you care to explain this to the court? Just how did you know that the weapon was a clock? Well, well, isn't it obvious? I saw that clock before. Um, what star was that again? I go to so many. Oops, I forgot. <laughs> so the witness had seen it before. That would make sense. Does that offense have any objections, Mr. Wright? Yes. The witness claimed she had seen it before, but this directly contradicts a piece of evidence already submitted to this court. Well then, let's see it. Please produce this evidence that will prove the witness had not seen the clock before. Isn't it the statue itself? Yeah, made by Larry Butts. It's simple. This clock was never in any store. Ever. What? A friend of mine made that clock. Only two exist in the world, and the one that isn't here is in police custody. Impossible! Everything is sold in stores! Ms. May, I think it's high time you went shopping for a better excuse. Ooh. Oh, excuse is not on sale today? Ooh. <laughs> oh, shoot. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. What's it to you, porcupine head? <laughs> that stupid call doesn't matter, okay? She did it, and she should die. Oh, shoot. Oh my god. Whoa. Whoa. Character change. Whoa. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. This is a court of law, and the witness will remain calm. <laughs> oh? Oh, oh, <laughs> Silly me. <laughs> did I, um, like, lose it? <laughs> I guess I did. <laughs> Link. S scary. Miss May, let me ask. Tell me, how did you know the weapon was a clock? <laughs> Hmm, oh dear. Does the defense have an opinion on this behavior? Okay, this is it. Yes, Your Honor. Allow me to explain how I see the truth of the matter. Miss April May, you knew the weapon was a clock because... The witness had never held the clock in her hand. However, she had heard that it was a clock. She heard? That is correct, Your Honor. There is no other way she could have known the thinker was a clock. And I can show you the proof. Well, this is interesting. Let's see it, then. Show me evidence proving that the witness had heard the murder weapon was a clock. Wiretap. Have a look at this. <laughs> oh, th that? <laughs> I found this in Miss May's room. M Mr. Wright, please explain to the court what this is. Miss April May? You were tapping the victim, Miss Mia Fey's phone, were you not? Ooh, ooh. Your Honor, this is irrelevant. I'm not entirely sure that it is. Objection overruled. It troubles me that our witness was in possession of a wiretap. This is outrageous. Does the defense truly claim that the witness was tapping her phone? Absolutely. Even if that was the case, which it's not, you still have to prove one thing. Did the victim... Wignum? Victim? Did the victim ever say that the weapon was a clock on the phone? Can you prove that? I think not. Oh yeah? I think I can. It's simple. What? Here's my proof. 
The proof that the victim said on the phone that the weapon was a clock is... The phone itself? Let's listen to the conversation again. I present the defendant's cell phone. Yes, we've seen that. Listen once more to the conversation between the defendant and the victim. Mia, what's up? You haven't called in a while. Well, actually, there's something I want you to hold on for me. Again? What's it this time? It's a clock. It's made to look like that statue, the thinker, and it tells you the time. Miss April May, you used a wiretap to listen to this conversation. That's how you knew the thinker was a clock. Am I wrong? I... I... Your Honor, this is ridiculous. Your Honor, look at the witness's face. Does she seem amused to you? The defense demands an answer. La, la, la. Witness, answer the question. Did you tap a phone? Miss May! Shut up, all of you! What gives you the right to talk to me like that? You, you lawyer! That's not an insult, that's my profession. <laughs> what kind of insult was that? It's no fair, all of you ganging up on me like that. Oh, so I'm the bad girl. Is that it? Is that it? <laughs> that did it. The court's seen the real Miss April May now. Now to deal the final blow. Why the wiretap? Why did you tap her phone? Answer the question! Do I have to? Isn't this a murder trial? Isn't it tippity-tapping uh, irrelevant? Uh, she's saying exactly what Edgeworth wants her to say. Miss May, you were tapping the victim's phone. I hardly call that irrelevant. While this court does not condemn the defense's tone of speech, he has a point. Well, Miss May, do you have an explanation for the court? Can you prove you had nothing to do with this murder, even though you tapped her phone? Ha! I'd like to see her pull that off. Mr. Lawyer, I saw that evil, evil grin. You were probably thinking I'd like to see her pull that off, weren't you? Damn, she's good. Well, you're not the first man who's thought that, and of course I can and will. You can't be serious. No way! Way, I say, way! Oh, and I assure you, I'm serious, Mr. Lawyer. <laughs> okay, so the killing happened around 9 o'clock that night. Why, that's just when I was getting room service for that sweet bellboy. R room service? Iced coffee, I believe it was. Iced coffee, you know, like normal coffee, but cold. If you don't drink it quick, the ice melts, and then you have regular cold coffee. Uh, iced coffee? Think I'm making this up? Ask the bellboy. <laughs> Ergo, the witness was not at the scene at the time of the murder. So where does that leave us? It is my great displeasure to inform you that the witness appears to have been tapping the victim's telephone. Oops. However, that is a separate crime with no bearing on the current case whatsoever. Her testimony stands. She saw the defendant, Maya Faye, commit murder. No, they're going to just let her walk away. There's no way I can win this unless I tie Miss May to the murder somehow. Well, does the defense have anything to say? Um, well, come on, think of something. Uh, call the bellboy. The defense would like to call the hotel bellboy as a witness. There's something suspicious there, and I'm going to get to the bottom of it. I think you're sucking quite low enough already. I object to calling the bellboy. Why? What's your reason? Because I hold that the, that the wiretapping had nothing to do with the killing. <laughs> However, if you agree to one condition, I'll consent to calling this witness. Condition? If Miss April May's alibi is not called into question after you examine the bellboy, then you will recognize that Miss April May was not the killer, thus she is innocent. Therefore, you must accept the verdict of guilty for Miss Maya Fay. That is my condition. What? I better find something suspicious in that bellboy's testimony. Otherwise, Maya will be declared guilty on the spot. What should I do? Accept the condition? All right, I've got nothing to lose, except for, well, everything. Understood, I accept your condition. Hm. Fool, you fell right into my trap. 
Uh-oh. Uh, um, oh, wait. <laughs> Very well. The call calls that hotel bellboy to the stand. I believe we're ready for the witness to testify. He certainly does look like a bellboy. Yes, sir. I received your summons in the middle of work, sir. I'm happy to be of service. That tea set looks rather heavy, so without further ado, the witness may begin his testimony. Very good, sir. One order of testimony coming right up, sir. <laughs> I am the head bellboy at the Gatewater Hotel, in business for four generations. I believe I received a call after eight in the evening from our guest, Miss May. She asked for an iced coffee to be brought to her at nine o'clock on the dot, sir. I brought it to her at precisely the requested time, of course, and I delivered the iced coffee to our guest, Miss May, herself. Oh, I see. The defense may be getting towards examination. R right, I'm ready, I hope. This is it. If I can't prove Miss May was involved with the murder now, Maya will be finished. Except I can't seem to find anything. Oh, no. Um, hell, bellboy, uh, I don't care. I believe I received a call in after... Okay. Let's press. Are you sure it was Miss May on the phone? Absolutely, sir. How can you be so certain? I checked Miss May in personally, sir. Not only did I see her in all of her stunning radiance, but I also heard her voice. And then I saw them, and I... Um, uh... <laughs> the point being, I remembered her quite well, sir. Yes, what then? Nine o'clock on the dot, you say? Yes, I confirmed that detail several times. She was watching a program on the TV and wished to drink after she finished, sir. Nine o'clock, the time of the murder. I brought it to her precisely the requested time, of course. Precisely nine o'clock, then? Precisely, exactly, and most definitely, sir. Nine p.m. How can you be so sure? Miss May was quite insistent that it be brought then. Oh, bellboy, tihi, I'd like, like, an iced coffee exactly at nine o'clock. Something like that, sir. Therefore, I knocked on her door at the crack of nine o'clock, sir. Why would she be so particular about the time? Alright. You are sure it was Miss May herself? A absolutely, sir. Absolutely? Yes, sir. As in, so very absolutely, sir. It's an endearing mannerism of mine. How come you're so very certain? Well, when I brought her room service, sir, she, the guest, sir, she favored me with a, um, embarrasser, sir. Embarrasser? Is that French for embrace? It's French for kiss, sir, but not a French kiss, sir, more of a peck on the cheek. Oh, I said that wrong then. Why would she have done that? I believe perhaps she was momentarily swayed by my prim demeanor, sir. It was a moment I shall never ever forget, sir. Sounds pretty fishy to me. I think our Miss May was up to something and she wanted the bellboy to remember her. Damn it. It's no good. There's nothing there. Is, is that it? Tsk, tsk. Finally, you understand. This bellboy has absolutely no reason to lie. Now... If you have any decency, you will end this rather tedious cross-examination here. Hmm, it was a bit tedious. The witness may leave the stand. I can't let this happen, can I? W wait, please wait. Yes, does the defense have something to add? One last question. Let me ask one last question. Your Honor, I must object. This charade of justice has gone on long enough. Now, now, Mr. Edgeworth. All right, Mr. Wright, I'll give you one last question, that's all. Okay. This is really it. Now, this is my last chance. What do I ask him about? Ah. Um. Room Do I ask him about the room service or the check-in? The bed making, who freaking cares? I don't know. T tell me again about the uh, room service. Uh, again, sir? At exactly 9 o'clock, I delivered room service to Miss May in room 303. The guest had requested iced coffee. $18 was the charge, as I recall. I see. $18? Doesn't that seem a bit expensive? Y yes, well, iced coffee is for two, you know, and we don't skip on the ice, sir. Uh, what did he say? 
shut up truck. <laughs> There's a truck outside. I'm not sure if you guys can hear it. <laughs> what did you say? Uh, oh, uh, uh, rather, uh, quite. Bellboy, tell us the truth now. Was someone else saying in Miss Ho- Miss Hayes- Ah, uh, frick. Was someone else me Ah! Whatever. I object. That was objectionable. Objection overruled. The winners will answer the question. Uh, yes, uh, I see. Why did you not mention this in your testimony? W well, sir, you, uh, you didn't ask. Nice try. That's the sort of thing you're normally supposed to mention. Uh, yes, uh, quite, indeed. It was the, uh, good barrister there, Mr. Edgeworth, who... Uh, he asked me not to mention if I, w if I wasn't specifically asked, sir. Oof! Y you fool! He got Edgeworth. I've done it. I've won. Miss April May checked into a twin room with a man, correct? Yes, sir. Then when, then, when you brought them room service, you didn't see that man in the room? That's right, sir. Mmm. Your Honor, we have just learned of another person involved who may have been with the murderer. In this new light, I hold that it's impossible to judge the defendant. You agree, Mr. Edgeworth? Who? Who is this other person? Simple. It was... The man with Miss April May. The man who checked in with Miss April May. Oof! Your Honor, as has been previously revealed, Miss April May was tapping the victim's phone, yet Miss May herself has an alibi at the time of the murder. However, that does not clear the man that was with her. The bellboy saw no one else in the room at the time of the murder. My, what a convenient little setup, but it's too late. Too late? I suppose you'd like it if it was too late, wouldn't you? After all, it was you who hid the presence of the other man from this court. Oof! Upstart, amateur, these accusations are ludicrous. Enough! The court acknowledges the defense's argument. I expect the prosecution and defense to look into this matter fully. Am I understood? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. That is all today for the trial of Maya Faye. Court is adjourned. And we're done. Never mind, we are not done. September 7, 2.24 p.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 1. Mr. Wright! You were amazing in there! Really? <laughs> I think I might be your newest fan! Oh, I was just doing my job, you know? <laughs> Then again, that other attorney was pretty cool, too. Huh? That face of his, with his eyes wide and trembling lips, it sends shivers up my spine. Hmm, if you say so. So, what happens with me? Do I get to go home now? Well, no. I don't think so. Not yet. Oh, I see. But I got a great lead in today's trial. A lead? That man with Miss May. He's the key. Oh, I get it. What happened to Miss May after that, anyway? I heard they arrested her. I guess she's learning her charms won't work everywhere. She's probably at the detention center now. I may have to go down there later. Anyway, this case is far from closed. Yes, sir! I'm going to find out more about this man. Do you think he was the one who... Maybe so. Sis... Don't worry. I'll find him by tomorrow. I promise. I'm counting on you! I asked for a full record of Miss May's testimony. I thought it might come in handy during the trial tomorrow. But now that I have it, I'm not so sure. Most of her testimony was all lies. In fact, there's only one part that got left on the record. I don't know how much good this will do to me at all. Anyway, time to hit the pavement and do some investigating. Maya doesn't belong in the detention center, and it's up to me to get her free. And... The trial is over. Alright, well, I guess that's it for uh, for this episode. Um, if you enjoyed it, please, um, you know, maybe leave a like, maybe leave a comment, maybe even subscribe. I'll see you next time! Bye.